we have a simple lesson tonight. And for any Christian who has dealt with failure, impatience, weariness, tired, sickness, and the loss of hope. And maybe thought, and like David wrote in the psalm, the Lord's not hearing me. My prayers are bouncing off heaven. They're not reaching God, and they are reaching God. And we got to realize when we do in the realm of prayer, we got to realize God says yes, no, or not now. But even the Lord Jesus Christ got weary. We get exhausted. And as you grow older and older in your Christian life, you may have one prayer you desire God to answer. And you can't give up unless God has answered that prayer, surely with a no. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, you know that that prayer is a no. Then you need to stop. I've got one prayer right now. I keep praying and I look at the situations in my life. How can it be? I'm not giving up. You see, the devil will get you to quit. And at that moment would have been when God answered that prayer. What if Job quit? What if Job quit chapter 39? What if David quit in the caves? What if Samson quit at the mill? So we have, looking at first is Luke 18. And we're looking at salvation, verse 26. And they that heard said, well, then who can be saved? And he, Jesus, answers it. The things which are impossible with man are possible with God. And that's our subject tonight. You can't save nobody. But God can. And you got a child, a spouse, a parent, a grandparent, a best friend. And they're just not getting it. They're not trusting. They're not believing. Pray. Keep praying. You know, I have heard stories of people who got saved after the Christian died. I have heard people get saved at the funeral of their friend who was a Christian who was going on to heaven. You know? There have been a lot of answered prayers at God's timing. And we even had in our lives, and I can think of you for me, that God has answered a prayer. And we forgot we were praying for that. I've had just, just recently, I have within... About a week after God answered the prayer, and I'm sitting down in my bed, I'm like, wait a minute, you know, I've been praying for that, and God answered that. And I never thanked him. And that's a sad testimony. But we have an all-powerful God and we're going to look at two fishing trips. But we could go to Genesis 1. You realize all the planets in the universe was created by God. All the stars. The Bible says all the stars. God knows how many there are and has a name for all of them. God made them. Every angel that's in heaven. The cherubims. 
God one day is going to make New Jerusalem and the New Earth. God made the gold that men suffer all their lives for silver. God made all the materials that, uh, that you can strive for your electric cars. Or your gasoline cars. Every raw material comes from God. Genesis 1. And if we were to go all the way back to Adam and Eve. And we could think of all the desires of men. All the prayers of man to God. Can you imagine how many prayers God answered? And as I said before, he answered some yes. He said some to no. And then he answered not now. And when you go into the life of the gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and John closes his book, is you know what? We couldn't write all the things that happened to Jesus. You cannot limit all the leprosy that's in the gospel. You cannot limit all the blindness that's in the gospel. You cannot limit all the devil possessions in the gospels. And all those that were deaf. That's a tip of an iceberg. A three and a half years ministry that John said you would have volumes of books. We're dead, we're raised. Somebody would walk up to Jesus and say, Jesus, will you heal me? Jesus, will you give me my, my sight and faith? Was the answer. And we have John 21. Verse 3, Simon Peter says unto him, I go fishing. Let's fishing. I'm going fishing. I'm taking my children fishing. I'm taking my wife fishing. I come from a lobster group of men. We used to go lobstering. Lobster boats, lobster pots, buoys and all that. Okay, fishing. What's so hard about fishing? Nothing. Is impossible for God. Just read on. They entered a ship immediately, and they night they caught nothing. Oh no! I've had those times. You ever had those times? You go fishing, you sunk more worms. Where I come from, Connecticut, we use worms, sand crawlers or night crawlers. They sunk more worms. Crabs we used to use for the. For the blue fish, you, you, you sunk them all in the waters and, and you fed the fish, you didn't get nothing. But when the morning was now come, they're out there all night, Jesus stood on the shore. But disciples knew not it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you any meat? They said, No, we. We ain't got nothing. We're pooped. We're tired. He said to him, cast the net on the right side of the ship. Ye shall find. And they cast thereof. And now they had not able to draw it in for the multitude of fish. In other words, so Jesus says, cast it on the right side. You've been fishing on the wrong side. And they get so many fish, they can't handle the nets. You know what? The disciples did not ask. They didn't even know it was Jesus. They did not ask. And yet Jesus knew. And Jesus called the fish that he created, and he says, get in that net. Stand right here. There's a net coming. And I don't know how Jesus did it, but he, God had all the fish. Read on. 
Therefore, the disciples whom Jesus loved followed Peter. It is the Lord. <laughs> this miracle is of the Lord. We recognize it. Look at verse four, 11, excuse me. Simon Peter went up, drew the net to land full of great fishes. Great fishes. No tiny fish. 153. There were so many, it was not the net break. And there's another miracle. They didn't ask for Jesus. And they, there are times, you know what? We have a need in our life. We don't ask. And God will, will speak to you. Do this. Go there. Say this. Or even surprise you. If you ever open an envelope and wow. Have you ever gone to church and somebody sl slips you money? Add to that today to us. We didn't ask. And it, it sure to me even more about a decision that my daughter and I are going to make. Those men threw the net out and they, they did what they do and they caught nothing. And you got, you know, I mean, everybody, I know they joke about this message, and you don't know, but all the fish were on the right side of the boat. Not, maybe you're fishing on the left side. They're fishing on the wrong side. Here's this man on the beach. They don't even know it's Jesus. They don't even know it's Jesus to, after the nets are full, they say, hey, that's the Lord Jesus. Have you ever had anything in your life Extreme impossibility. Somebody comes up to you. You never see them again. I know angels are men, males. No females. And I had one time where a female came up to me. Proclaimed to be saved. Man, she, she gave me a great. I was going through a trouble in my life. And it got worse. <laughs> that woman comforted me. She spoke to me in the same wavelength of the Bible and Jesus. No religion, no charismatic. She just spoke to me. And I'm not going to say she was Jesus. I'm not going to say she was an angel because they're not females. But God sent somebody in my life. Has God ever sent somebody in your life just out of the boom? And they were a blessing to you. They were a guidance to you. That you know, go on the right side. Do this. Go here. That's God. Now, if somebody comes up to you and tells you to do something, and it defiles the scriptures. That's Satan. And the impossibility of men is. Nothing's going to happen. They could have put that, that net on that side of the ship for 365 years. They were going to catch nothing. Until Jesus showed up and gives you direction. We'll see that in a moment. And they followed what Jesus said. Jesus said the right side. They went on the right side and it was successful. Do you know what success is? Is when you follow Jesus and you listen to Jesus. And you may get clobbered by the world. You may get clobbered by other Christians. But you know what Jesus could have told these men in the Gospel of John chapter 21? Well done. 
because you listened to me. Last night, oh, no, no, that wasn't good at all. Come morning, a type of second advent, you listen to me, look at the net, well done. We got to be in a prayer life. We got to be in the word of God. We got to be listening to Jesus. We got to be expecting. But we also got to be aware of the tactics of Satan. That we don't get deceived. Now we read it's impossible with men the salvation. With God it's not impossible. You just go out there telling the Bible. You go out there and pass gospel tracts out. You go out there telling the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died and was buried and rose again the third day according to scriptures. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You go tell them that. You leave salvation between them and God. He that increases is God. I have been in churches where, you know, come up, you've you, you seen 46,000 stanzas of just as I am, and they come up to the altar and you make them say this prayer. That's not salvation. And then you go in your little book and you put a little tally mark. Oh, look at that five this week. I see it on my Facebook every week. This church, 12, 20, 23, 30 got saved. It's like, really? You put the nets out there for salvation. And you let God guide the fish to it. It's not you. It's Jesus. Now, go back to the Gospel of Luke. Chapter 5. Verse 4. Now, when they had left speaking, he said to Simon, that's Peter again, launch out into the deep, go further. Let's get away from shore, go further. And let down your nets, plural, for draw, for draft. All right, Jesus tells Peter, all right, let's go out a little further, let your nets, plural, cast in the draft. Simon answered him and said, Master, we toiled all night. Does that sound familiar? Now, that's not John 20, 24, but it sure sounds like it. This is early in Jesus' ministry. He's like arguing with Jesus. He knows Je there's Jesus. He's arguing with him. When he didn't know it was Jesus, he, okay. Wow. When we know it is the Lord God, Jesus, do you begin to debate, doubt, like Peter's doing here? Or is they do this? I've been doing that. Go to work today. I don't want to go. To, I'm going to work for 42 years. I, I I just want to stay. Go to work. I don't want to go to work. You ever had that happen with church? You're like, I don't want to go to church today. I don't to church. Cool. And you go to church. You don't want to be there. And the music or the service, the the the, the sermon, man, just pricks your heart. And you're walking out of the service where you walked in. Oh, I don't want to. And you're walking out of that service. I'm just over in the glory land. You know? Jesus has told Peter something that Peter does quite often. Cast your net. You know, I don't know how many times Peter's done that. And I don't know how many times God's told you to do something that you do every single day. And God's like, just do it. And I, you know, 
Oh, come on, Lord. Can I get a new job? No. Just do what you're doing. Don't debate God. Don't, don't have an argument with Jesus. Just do what Jesus told you to do. Give that man a track. And uh, listen, I'm one. Oh, no, no, Lord. He won't take it back. And I debate the Lord. And I lost a blessing. I want to think my prayers could have been answered if I'd just done what the Lord told me to do. And I don't know what. I may have lost that revelation by God by him telling me to do something. And I said no, and I argued like Peter is. And I was like, okay, fine. Have you ever read Pilgrim's Progress and you just wonder how Pilgrim ended up in Doubting Castle? Took the wrong turn. Where he had direction. So he's arguing with Jesus and Master. We toiled all night. We have nothing. Here's the man. We have nothing. We're men. We have nothing. You know what the lost man gets at death and a great white throne judgment? He gets nothing. Because he gave God nothing. You know what Christians are going to get who done nothing? I mean, they're saved. But they don't do nothing with Jesus. They don't read their Bible. They don't pray. They don't witness. You know what they're going to get the judgment seat of Christ? Nothing. If you put in 100, I mean, if you put in 0%, nothing. You're going to get 0%, nothing back. You can't walk in the bank and say, listen, I want to take $1,000 out of my account. And you never put money into account. You never started an account. So, Peter's like, we've done this over and over and over. Now, previously in the Gospel of John, they're out there fishing, they catch nothing. And they're just sitting on the boat, whatever. And this man, it was just Jesus, just cast your net on the right side. Okay, they do it. The same man, Jesus says, all right, cast your net. No, no, we're tired. It's, it's been long. We, we haven't had anything. You ever had doubt? You ever struggled with Jesus? Nevertheless, now here we go. And take it, nevertheless, at thy word. John chapter 24, at the word of Jesus, the right side. They went on the right side and they got all the fish. And they even counted it. I don't know if I gave him the number. So, fish, drop the nets. Be, uh, okay. At the word of God. If you don't want to do it, you're tired of doing it. You, you're just frustrated doing it. You're just bothered by doing it. Do what the word of God says. Your children don't want to listen. Train your children. They're, they're, they're bad. Train your children. Oh, man, it's not working. Train your children. They don't want to go to church. Train your children. Train, 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 train. You know? You save enough pennies in the jar, one day you're going to have money. He says, at, the, at thy word... That's the most important. At the word of God. The word of God says don't commit adultery. Don't commit adultery. The word of God says don't steal. Don't steal. The word of God says thou shalt not bear a false witness. Don't bear a false witness. If the Bible says read and study the word of God. Read and study the word of God. If the Bible says pray often. Pray often. If the Bible says go to church. Find a Bible believing church. And go. The Bible says help 
your brothers and sisters in your church. Help your brothers and sisters in the church as you are able. At thy word. You see, sometimes as we as we are praying, we're waiting for the answer. Do you realize, my friend, that we could be an answer to somebody else who's praying? That God could be using us. I always say, be a blessing rather than always wanting a blessing. And there is a big difference. It's always not about self, joy, Jesus first, others next, and you last. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and the net break. Now look at the end of verse 5. They let down the net. Jesus said, verse 4, nets, plural. Peter, they let down a net, and the net break. And they had so many fish. Why did the net break? Because they didn't listen to Jesus. You can say at thy word, Jesus, and still fail. You can go, uh, uh, listen, I honestly believe this, and uh, there's not one, I think you should try to start one. You can go to a non-King James Bible-believing church. You can go to any any kind of church you want. If it's not right in doctrine, if they're not right in practice, all right, you're at church, but you're not at the proper church. And all these fish again, it's God. It's Jesus. Who made the fish? Genesis chapter 1, God made them. You know, fish and birds, they had this migratory mig uh, you know, thing where they, they go from one part of the world to another part of the world, and, and they don't understand that's God. They got birds where, you know, the... the they leave the babies here, and they fly all the way down south, and then the babies fly down, and the babies know right where their parents are. That's God. It's not evolution. And it's sometimes in your prayer life, you just got to say, you know what? Let God be true and every man a liar. You just got to get your hands off it. And let God do it. And the problem is, for many of us all, us all, we take our hands off it. We're afraid that God's okay. And that may happen. I myself in my life made a great mistake and great sin. I had to confess it. I think there were, there were just years that were just lost. I don't know what God's going to do for my prayer now. Because I'm in Florida. The real prayer answer could be still in Connecticut. I don't know. For my one prayer. But God's able when man is not. And when anything in our life happens, where it's financial, or it's medical, or it's catastrophe, let's go to God first. Let's take issues we have you got to call 911 okay call 911 then go to god 
I mean, you need 911, you dial them on the phone, and you just start praying to God silent. And it's a simple one, simple two-word prayer. Oh, God. Oh, God. God. That's a prayer. Peter had that prayer. Lord, save me. You don't need this extravagant prayer and all that. And God may send somebody you are unaware to get your fish. Or you may know where your fish are coming from. And you may have hazardly listened and obey. And your prayer gets broken. I had that happen. But give all the glory to God. In the precious name of our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ.